Hey guys, welcome to another episode of my video series where I will be going over, hopefully, every single class and their engravings and giving them all an average rating out of five based on a couple criteria. These criteria are accessibility, cost, ease of play, damage, utility, fun, and popularity. At the end of the video, I will give an overall score to the class based on all these criteria so that you can make a decision on whether or not this class is for you. And given that fun and popularity are a bit subjective in terms of its value, I will give one overall score that includes them and one that doesn't. The class that I want to cover today is Knight's Edge Soul Eater. And while there are two main builds for this class, the build that I will be covering today is the 413 build, which is the higher ceiling and much more popular build. Being the newest class addition to Lost Ark, Soul Eater is definitely one of the strongest classes in the game, and Knight's Edge has the potential to be one of the best if played correctly. But while it may be strong, there are a couple of hurdles that anybody wanting to play this class may need to consider before making one. So let's dive in. The first criteria is accessibility, which is basically how accessible is the class to a new player. There are three things that go into this category, skill points, runes, and a small portion about cooldown gems. Looking at the skill points, the Knight Edge Soul Eater is a very efficient class that can do a lot with very little. While, of course, 420 skill points is ideal for any class, I would say that the Knight's Edge Soul Eater can perform fairly optimally with only 388 skill points. You will be losing out on some damage from Harvest and a bit of flexibility on your counter, but overall, having less skill points should not affect the performance of this class in a significant way. When it comes to the runes for this class, Knight's Edge Soul Eater has a huge advantage over any of the other classes that I've covered so far because it does not use any wealth runes. The biggest hurdle for this class will be the Legendary Galewind runes and the Legendary Conviction and Judgment runes. And while the Legendary versions of these runes will be the best in slot, if you're a beginner looking to play this class, you can definitely make do with lower rarity runes. Lastly, when it comes to gems, this class does not require any significant level of cooldown gems to make it operate smoothly. Like Deathblow Striker though, there will always be some level of downtime and waiting for skills to come back up off of cooldown when it comes to rotations, and the higher level cooldown gems only serve as a way to decrease that downtime slightly. The one cooldown gem that is required though is the level 7 cooldown gem for Lunatic Edge, which should be fairly easy to get with just the Super Mokoko Express. So overall, I would give Knight's Edge Soul Eater a 4.5 out of 5 for accessibility, with 5 being the most accessible class in the game, and 0 being the least accessible class in the game. This class is extremely new player friendly and does not require a significant number of skill points, nor does it require any wealth runes. Additionally, the only real required cooldown gem is a level 7 cooldown gem for Lunatic Edge which is very easily accessible for the majority of players in the game. When it comes to the cost of a class, we want to look at two things, the cost of their accessories and the cost of their gems. In the accessory department, Knight's Edge Soul Eater is also quite friendly. Being a crit main stat class means that one, you don't have to worry about having the highest quality. Of course, with anything, the higher quality, the better. But when you compare it to specialization classes, there is no need to hit a certain threshold to make builds work. And two, crit accessories at the end of the day are just the cheapest accessories on the market compared to both spec and swift accessories. Now, when it comes to gems, Knight's Edge Soul Eater is neither the most expensive nor the least expensive class out there. It's not quite like Deadeye, which needs seven damage gems, but it's also not as easy as Striker that uses three damage gems. Knight's Edge Soul Eater uses 5 damage gems, which isn't the best but also not the worst in terms of cost. So all in all, I would give Knight's Edge Soul Eater a 4 out of 5 for cost, with 5 being the cheapest class in the game and 0 being the most expensive class in the game. While the class is extremely affordable being a crit main stat class, the fact that it uses 5 damage gems takes it out of the running for the cheapest class in the game. Though, over time, that may change as the popularity of the class itself changes. The next category is Ease of Play. Basically, how easy or hard is this class to play? And when it comes to the Knight's Edge Soul Eater, 
This is the one category that I would say the Knight's Edge Soul Eater struggles a bit. There are many layers of playing this class well, and some of those layers are not even under your control. So to start, Knight's Edge has one of the strictest rotations in the game. While there can be a slight variation in the order in which you use some of your skills, you will in general be sticking to a very set rotation. And if you use your moves outside of this rotation or miss an attack in your rotations, that could mean a significant loss in DPS because it directly affects how much meter you generate with your attacks in your rotation. Speaking of meter, that is another added layer of difficulty to this class as well. This class has two meters to manage, your soul stones and your edge meter. Starting off with the soul stones, the reason why your rotation is so strict is because you need to use your skills at a certain timing depending on whether your soul stones are full or not. And as I mentioned before, if you miss an attack, you may not have enough soul stones to complete your rotation, making your DPS drop significantly. As for the edge meter, this is the meter that allows you to enter into soul snatch mode. And while this meter for the most part just increases on its own while you're doing your rotation, when you're out of combat, this meter slowly starts draining. And if you let it drain enough, your entire rotation can get disrupted, which again, will significantly lower your damage output. And unfortunately, this sometimes can be uncontrollable. Let's say a boss phases. Well, you can't quite hit the boss anymore, but your meter is gonna start draining. So if that phase is long enough, then your entire rotation could be thrown completely out of whack. There's also Lunatic Edge, which gives you a movement speed buff when you use it. While that doesn't sound like much, Knight's Edge Soul Eater is a raid captain class, and Lunatic Edge is used to make sure you're maximizing on the damage boost that raid captain gives you. So this means that you always have to make sure that you have the buff up at all times in order to maximize your damage output, or else, you're basically running around missing half an engraving. So overall, I would give Knight's Edge Soul Eater a 2.5 out of 5 for ease of play, with 5 being the easiest class to play and 0 being the hardest class to play. The fact that it has such a strict rotation in addition to having to manage two separate meters makes this class quite a difficult class to pick up for the average player in Lost Ark. When it comes to the damage of Knight's Edge Soul Eater, this class is definitely one of the strongest classes in the game. While it isn't the strongest class in the current meta, it is definitely extremely close to the top, and if played well, you could easily compete with the strongest classes out there. So because of this, I would give it a 4.5 out of 5 in the damage category, with 5 being the strongest class in the game, and 0 being the weakest class in the game. As for utility, I would say that Knight's Edge Soul Eater is above average at best. Looking at the skills themselves, you would think that this class should be quite strong in the utility department, but when you take a closer look at the class and how it operates, you start to pick apart the layers that make this class a bit lacking at times when it comes to contributing to the party. To start, the synergy that this class brings is nothing special. All it gives is a damage synergy. Classes with other synergies, such as back and front attack synergy and crit rate and crit damage synergies are much more value to a party composition. And when you look at the class's ability to provide stagger and weak point to the party, you may initially think that it brings quite a bit to the table, but the issue goes back to the class's weakness of having an extremely strict rotation. Because rotation is so strict, even if there is a certain stagger or destruction check, for the most part, Knight's Edge Soul Eaters will not throw their skills out if it doesn't match to the rotation. So while it may have some good stagger and destruction skills, because they can't really dictate the order in which they throw out these skills, that ends up harming their ability to provide support with mechanics. So all in all, I would give this class a 3 out of 5 when it comes to utility, with 5 being the best utility and 0 being the worst utility. While on the surface, this class seems like it'll bring quite a bit to the party, when you unpack the way the class operates, you can start to see the cracks forming. Now, how fun a class will definitely be subjective, so please take this category with a grain of salt. 
but personally, I think Knight's Edge Soul Eater is a very fun class to play. While it has a very strict rotation, this class makes up for that by being a very mobile class, almost always running at full movement speed, and also possesses a set of extremely flashy skills. Also, who doesn't like a scythe wielding class? This class is often compared to a mixture between Deathblow Striker and Demonic Shadow Hunter. So if you like either of those classes, this class might be the class for you. So overall, I would give this class a 4 out of 5 in the fun category, with 5 being the most fun class in the game, and 0 being the least fun class in the game. And the last category is popularity. And just like the fun category, how much you value popularity definitely varies from one person to another. But the fact is that the more popular a class is, the easier it is to purchase accessories. So on paper, a class that is more popular will be more enjoyable to play than a class that is less popular. With that out of the way, Soul Eater is definitely one of the most popular classes in the game. Despite being one of the most recent classes to be released, the Soul Eater class makes up 5.15% of the 1600 plus item level characters in Korea, making it the 5th most popular class in the game. But while the Soul Eater class is an extremely popular one, the Knight's Edge engraving does get slightly beat out by the Full Moon Harvester engraving, with 40.14% of all Soul Eaters using this engraving. So overall, I would give Knight's Edge Soul Eater a 4.5 out of 5 in the popularity category, with 5 being the most popular class and 0 being the least popular class. So, taking all the stats we have covered, the Knight's Edge Soul Eater has a 4.5 in accessibility, a 4 in cost, a 2.5 in ease of play, a 4.5 in damage, a 3 in utility, a 4 in fun, and a 4 in popularity. All this rounds out to an overall score of 4 out of 5. And if you take out fun and popularity, this class would be rated a 3.5 out of 5. Knight's Edge is an extremely powerful class which many consider to be one of the top 5 classes in the game in regards to DPS. It is also an extremely accessible class with very low barriers of entry, given the fact that it's fairly cheap to build in addition to not requiring any wealth runes. But the class is by no means an easy class to play. Having an extremely rigid rotation and the fact that it needs to manage two meters makes it, in my opinion, a very hard class for anybody who doesn't have experience playing a meter-based class to pick up. Having said that though, if you are looking for a class with an extremely low barrier to entry, but also requires quite a bit of skill to hit the ceiling, the Knight's Edge Soul Eater may be the class for you. So that's it. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit about the Knight's Edge Soul Eater class, and hopefully that convinced you guys to make the class yourselves. Let me know in the comment section if it did, and also, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button, hit the sub button, ring the bell for notifications, and also, I stream every single night on twitch.tv slash misoxshiru starting at 10 p.m. PST. So hopefully I'll see you guys on my stream, but if not, hopefully I'll see y'all in the next video. All right guys, peace out.